He turned to go out. Uncle Timur called after him. When you were a boy what did you do? What did you play at? We We used to run around, jump, climb roofs. Sometimes we fought. But our games were all quite simple and everybody could understand them. To punish Jenny, Olga left for Moscow that evening without saying another word to her. She had nothing to do in Moscow, so she looked in on a friend of hers instead of going straight home. It was almost ten by the time she got to the flat and saw a telegram pinned to the door. Olga scanned the short message. It was from their father. Toward evening, when the vans began to leave the park, Jenny and Tanya ran home. Jenny wanted to change into gym shoes for a game of volleyball. Just as she was tying her laces the mother of the fair-haired little girl entered the room. The little girl lay asleep in her arms. The woman was crestfallen when she learned that Olga was not at home. I wanted to ask your sister if I could leave my girl here she said. I didn't know she wasn't at home. The train arrives tonight, you see, and I have to be in Moscow to meet my mother. Leave her with me said Jenny. What if Olga isn't here and he I good enough? Put her on my bed. I can sleep on the other one. She's sleeping quietly now and won't wake up till morning the mother said, brightening. All you have to do is to take a look at her and straighten her pillow now and then. They undressed the little girl and put her to bed. Her mother left. Jenny pulled back the curtains so that she could see the bed from outside, and closed the door. Then the two girls dashed off to play volleyball having settled that they would take turns running back to look at the child. They had no sooner gone than a postman came up to the porch. He knocked for a long time, and since there was no answer he crossed over. To the neighbors to inquire whether the people who lived in the cottage had moved back to town. No, the neighbor said. The girl was here a moment ago. I can give her the telegram. The neighbor signed for the telegram. 
put it in his pocket, sat down on a bench, lit his pipe, and waited for Jenny. An hour and a half later the postman came round again. Here's another one he said. What's all the fuss about? Be a good fellow and sign for this telegram too. The neighbor signed the book. It was quite dark now. He opened the gate, went up the steps to the porch and glanced through the window. Inside, a little girl was asleep, with a tawny kitten curled up by her head. That meant the owners were not far away. He opened the top window and shoved the two telegrams through. They fell neatly onto the window sill, where Jenny was certain to notice them at once. But Jenny did not notice them. She came in adjusted the child's pillow by the light of the moon, chased off the kitten, undressed and went to bed. She lay for a long time thinking about life. It wasn't her fault, and it didn't seem to be Olga's either, yet there they were, having their first big quarrel. Jenny was sad. She could not fall asleep. She decided to eat a slice of bread and jam. Jumping out of bed, she ran over to the cupboard, switched on the light and saw the telegrams on the windowsill. Her heart missed a beat. With trembling fingers she tore open the telegrams. The first read. We'll stop over en route midnight to three in morning. Wait for me town flat. The second read. Come immediately. Dad will be in town tonight. Olga. Jenny glanced at the clock with a sinking heart. It was a quarter to twelve. Pulling on her dress and picking up the sleeping child, she dashed out onto the porch like one possessed. Then she changed her mind. She put the child back in bed, ran out of the house and made for the milkwoman's house. There she pounded on the door with her fists and heels until the milkwoman's neighbor poked her head out of the window. What are you knocking for? the neighbor asked in a sleepy voice. What are you up to now? Please, I'm not up to anything Jenny pleaded. I must see Aunt Masha. The milkwoman.
I have to leave a baby with her. Rubbish, exclaimed the neighbor, shutting her window with a bang. The old woman left this morning to visit her brother in the village. A train pulling into the station blew its whistle. Jenny ran back into the road and bumped into the elderly gentleman, the doctor. Sorry, she gasped. Can you tell me what train that is? The old gentleman produced his watch. The 11.55 he replied. The last train to Moscow. How do you mean, the last, whispered Jenny, a lump rising in her throat. When does the next one leave? The next one leaves in the morning, at 3.40. What's the matter with you, child, he inquired solicitously, catching the reeling girl by the shoulder. You're crying. Can I help you in any way? No, no, you can't, said Jenny, choking back her tears and rushing away. Nobody in the world can help me now. At home she flung herself down on her bed, but the next moment she sprang up and glared at the sleeping child. Then, pulling herself together, she straightened the little girl's blanket and whisked the tawny kitten off the pillow. She switched on the lights on the porch, in the kitchen and in the living room sat down on the sofa and began to rock her head. She sat that way for a long time, thinking about nothing in particular. She accidentally touched the accordion which was lying by her side. Lifting it up mechanically, she began to finger the keys. A sad, solemn melody filled the room. Jenny abruptly laid the accordion aside and went over to the window. Her shoulders were shaking. No. She could not stay there alone and bear such torture a minute longer. She lit a candle and stumbled through the garden toward the barn. There was the loft, with its ropes, map, sacks and flags. She lit the lantern, went over to the wheel, found the right rope, hooked it on, and then jerked the wheel. 